Hey y'all, welcome back to Right at the Wire. Well, as I noted in the previous posting, uh, every day at Saratoga, they have a stakes race or two. And so today, uh, the inaugural stakes race, as it always is every year, is the Schuylerville for two-year-old fillies. So let's take a look at it. The Schuylerville is the grade three for two-year-old fillies, and it's run at six furlongs on the dirt. And it's important to note that most of these have yet to run at six furlongs. So it is a uh, step up in distance. And, of course, most of them have only had one start. So it's kind of hard to evaluate. So we'll do the best we can. Let's take a look. Number one is Carmelina. Uh, won her debut at four and a half furlongs at Parks. And did so pretty darn impressively. Uh, just, you know, totally dominated the field. And got a pretty good buyer, too. So... Uh, this one is certainly, I think, is going to be a contender here. I don't know how strong that field was, so it's kind of hard to evaluate. So we'll have to see if uh, uh, she can step up in class. The, the positives are that uh, she is by Maximus Mischief, who is a son of Into Mischief, the leading sire at Saratoga. And as we noted, a lot of times these sons of the leading sires uh, can produce get just as effective at the spa as Papa can. So uh, something to think about there. Uh, Butch Reed is uh, not the greatest at this angle. He's one for seven with a two dollar and seventy one cent ROI. Second start for two year olds at Saratoga, and he's not really much better elsewhere. But uh, pretty good trainer, and this one looks uh, uh, pretty decent. And uh, uh, so I'd have to believe that this one will probably be ready for bear. Uh, Becky's Joker is a first-time starter running in a stakes race, and uh, pretty interesting. Now, we've got another sire, Practical Joke, uh, who is by Into Mischief, and as we know, Practical Joke gets sprinters mostly, and uh, very good off the bench, so that is definitely a plus here. Um, the uh, uh, the dam is her first foal, so we can't, we don't really have a record there. But there's a couple of stakes winners in the pedigree, uh, so this one's probably uh, going to be uh, pretty decent at some point. Don't know if it's going to be uh, in the first start. Uh, the tab looks looks pretty good. I do like to see a six furlong work in there, as well as a couple of five furlongs. Uh, those are stamina building. You always like to see that. Uh, so that's a positive sign. You're getting a nice price, and you're getting Javier Castellano. Uh, Gary Contessa, you know, New York trainer, and uh, he is, uh, he's halfway decent with first-time starters, but I wouldn't say it's his mantra, so uh, take that for what you will. Uh, so this is a bit of a wild card, and, uh, you know, if you, if you need a price on a horse, maybe this is one for you. Union Suit is uh, trained by Graham Motion, and, and it's uh, unusual to see him get a, a horse coming out and sprints right away. Uh, but this one did, and actually has two starts, which is uh, more than you can say for a lot of the ones in here. It's by Eclipse Thoroughbred, so uh, good connections, and you get Manny Franco aboard. Uh, you know, just on the eye, uh, watching the last race, this one did pretty well. Uh, uh, you know, it ran a solid race, but uh, couldn't get to closing act, and the thing that was really... Uh, kind of disconcerting was to me. Closing act almost stopped at the finish line. I mean, he looked like he was completely out of gas, and Union Suit couldn't get to him. Uh, was It wasn't really closing the gap. Got a 45 buyer. Going to have to do a lot better to be competitive here. Uh, being by Union Rags, I think more than likely this one will be better longer, uh, but not at six furlongs, and uh, I think probably we want to want to wait to see what this one does in other races. Uh, status Seekers, trained by Rudy Rodriguez, and you get Joel Rosario aboard, and uh, this one will likely be rating, so that's a good place for Joel. Uh, another one, by, and upstart, the son of uh, Flatter, another good sire at Saratoga, so something to think about, but uh, this one didn't really uh, like the world on fire in the last race. Um, did a couple things that I did like, though. This one had to split foes uh, in the stretch. So showed some grit, showed some professionalism. You know, a lot of times when they're younger, they don't, uh, they're don't. they a little skittish about doing stuff like that. And this one did right away. So you have to like that. And uh, 
Joel was kind of spare with the whip, I noticed as well. So maybe this one's got a little more in the tank. Uh, Rudy Rodriguez is one for seven with a 294 ROI uh, with two year olds who won last out at Saratoga. Uh, this one will need to break a little better out of the gate. Uh, but, you know, the second start is always when they improve the most. And so the professionalism is the thing I keyed on. Uh, I think maybe underneath you can think about this one at 12 to 1, you get a pretty good price. Saratoga Secret is trained by the coach, D. Wayne Lucas, and you get Luis Saez aboard. And uh, boy, did he have to work this one all the way around the track, but he got results. Uh, rated pretty nicely and, uh, and then took command at the top of the stretch, and there was no looking back. Wasn't much of a field uh, that uh, that she beat, and you, that so that 64 buyer is, you know, I don't know how legitimate it is because the field wasn't so great. Uh, D. Wayne is three for 19 and 63 percent in the money with the second start at Saratoga, with a 332 ROI. So I'd expect this one will likely improve, and uh, you can see the last work on July 1st, uh, a week after running, which uh, is a little unusual, uh, was pretty solid. So uh, this one's coming into the race in good form. Uh, just have to wonder about the class level a little bit. Four to one might be a little short. Closing act is the one that uh, Union Suit ran against. And, uh, you know, you got Steve Asperson and you got Munnings. So you got a desire who likes the spa. And you got Tyler Gaffley on board. So a lot of things to like connections wise. Uh, but the thing is, like I said, at the top of the stretch, uh, this one was pulling away, and it looked like no problem. But I'm telling you, if you go back and watch that race at the finish line, this one almost stopped. It was really unsettling. You just don't see that too often. Uh, a horse who just looked completely out of gas at five and a half furlongs. Now I don't know what it was. Uh, uh, if maybe the, you know, maybe the class level was a little high for him. I don't know. But really, not a good sign whatsoever. It's Steve Asperson. I'll likely. Uh, I have to believe that he will get, uh, he will work out uh, whatever the problem might be and have this one running again. And, and you know, as the third start could likely move forward again. Probably not going to be good enough, though, to win this race, is my thinking. Wine on Tap is a Tappet, uh, another leading sire at the spa, by, and trained by Todd Pletcher, and you get a Rod Ortiz aboard. You know, all systems go connections wise. Uh, this one did what Pletchers do, first time out most of the time. Uh, came out and uh, won pretty handily. Looked pretty professional for a tappet, which was uh, nice to see. I did see the hint of a little bit of distraction in the stretch, like tappets will do. Uh, so it always has to, <coughs> you always have to have that in the back of your mind with tappets, is that are they really going to be focused on winning? But you look pretty good. Uh, I think on talent alone, he probably is good enough to win this race. I just got a little hint in the back of my mind about uh, about the Tappets and, and how they can be. Uh, but, you know, clearly display the talent, probably enough to win this race. Uh, but I just that just have a little thing about that, and uh, maybe it's me, but uh, he um, certainly looks good enough to win this race. Uh, Kiss for Luck, another one trained by Butch Reed, and... Uh, didn't really, uh, didn't really see a lot of zip, particularly in the uh, head-on view of the stretch. This one was kind of zigging a little bit, and uh, didn't uh, look kind of spent actually coming into the stretch. And that, that's obviously not a good sign. Only got a 36 buyer, not nearly good enough here. Um, and even with improvement, I doubt this one would be a factor. So I would pass. Dancing Diana, I really liked. Uh, James Lawrence is. Uh, uh, not uh, not necessarily the the greatest, but he does uh, he does get a lot of seconds with the first time starters uh, at the spa. So uh, take that for what you will. The first start at Delaware, I really liked what I saw from this one. Uh, Dancing Diana was not the favorite. Uh, Ursuline, I believe, was, and and she put that one away like with ease and just. Uh, had a really strong kick, was full of run coming to the finish, and it definitely had all the makings that this one is going to improve mightily in their next start. You got Johnny V aboard, and uh, I, I, you know, again, I just really liked it. It just looked like this horse had tons of run, and at 6-1, to one, I think you're getting a great price. I really like this horse, and I'm, I'm using liberally.
Uh, Mila Jones won at 54-1 to 1 in her debut. Now, you can, uh, you, one thing you could say, it was a big field. It was uh, nine horses in the race. And is by Tappature, a son of Tappet, so uh, not to belabor the point, but again, that's a positive. Uh, the fractions were incredibly slow uh, for five furlongs, 22 and 47. And actually, when I was watching the race, I believe it said 23 and 48. Maybe they corrected it, but uh, it was slow nonetheless. And uh, a 46 buyer would, you know, she didn't look special winning the race like there was any type of precocity there. It just maybe she got the jump. There were two or three who could have won the race. So it wasn't like it wasn't something that you get really excited about or, or were surprised like, oh wow, you know, we never look we got a this one came out of nowhere. Didn't get that feeling at all. So uh we'll be coming from off the pace. Maybe can get up underneath when some of the uh, others back up, but uh not likely to factor in this race, certainly not a win candidate. Sugar Treat uh, was a pretty good at Gulfstream. I, I thought it was a really uh, uh, showed some grit. Uh, the, she was not the favorite either. Escape Room was, and you see that that one came back to win in the next start. But I tell you, at the top of the stretch, uh, Escape Room looked like uh, she had the race won, and Sugar Treat just wore her down. Showed a lot of grit and uh, in, in winning the race. Now, granted, it was on all weather, and that's true. But uh, enticed should be a problem on dirt, I don't think. And I just really like the way this one went about her business. And uh, got a 65 buyer. And uh, I'll expect uh, with Flavian Pratt aboard, this one's going to run another good one. And I actually think this one's a solid contender to win this race. So here's our top five for the Scourville Stakes. Number one is Wine on Tap. Uh, Buyer-wise, he towers over the field. And he's by Tappet. you got Pletcher and Arad Ortiz. Uh, likely will run uh, another good race, likely to win this. But uh, you do always have the question about maturity with Tappets, but uh, he looks pretty good talent-wise. Number two is Dancy Diana. I really liked uh, her effort, uh, and uh, she, she she just looked full of run. I think there's, this one's definitely going to improve in the next start, and I don't think class is going to be an issue. Um, I... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this one took it right to one on tap and, and won the race. I, I feel pretty good about this horse. Number three is Sugar Treat. I love the uh, grit and the professionalism that she showed running down uh, Escape Room. He's a pretty good horse. And uh, I think this one is, uh, you know, showed a lot there and we should be coming off the pace. Uh, has, a, has a puncher's chance at the end of it. Carmelina looks uh, talented. Not sure she's going to be able to handle wine, wine on tap. Not sure. Uh, how strong a field that was she beat, but she did show some precocity there and looks pretty talented. Could take it from the front end. Closing act, I just have to believe Steve Asperson's going to uh, work out what was wrong. Uh, she just didn't give very good signs at the end of that last race. Uh, just looked completely exhausted, and um, it just uh, just didn't give a good impression. But uh, if anybody's going to turn this one around, it'd be Steve Asperson and maybe on town alone. Uh, she can factor in this race, but um, under, I think, is more likely. So that's for Scarlettville. Uh, you never know with two-year-olds, but it does look wine, like wine on taps race to lose. But uh, I think Dancy Diana is going to give her everything she can handle, and I wouldn't be surprised if she takes it down. Really like that horse, really like the direction that she's headed, and I think there's a lot to, more to be expected. Uh, it's a wide open race to be sure. Hope our analysis helped you with your own wagering strategy, and I'll wish you the best of luck this weekend as always. Our uh, website is due to be going up in the very near future, and uh, I'll look forward to that. I hope you do as well. Uh, and again, we do have some nice opportunities available, including a loyalty program to thank all of you loyal subscribers. And anybody who does subscribe up until uh, the beginning of the Saratoga meet can take advantage of it as well. So just a little added kick. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, it does help keep us going, and we do thank you for coming by. Love to hear from you guys, as always, and uh, really looking forward to sharing the, the Saratoga experience with you. So I'll be in touch with you very soon, and until then, be well.